surprise. <laughs> we are at the end of Are You Ready for Christmas, the series for Advent. And that means Christmas is almost here. David and I began the series with the message, Prepare the Way of the Lord, preparing with great anticipation the coming of Christ, the coming of Jesus' birth. If you haven't yet, don't. The second in the series urged us to practice restraint during the holidays, de-emphasizing commercialism, including shopping, instead focusing on Christ. In the third message of the series, Interior Decorating, we were encouraged to redecorate our souls, remembering that the Holy Spirit and Christ's birth are the most meaningful ways to decorate from the inside out. Can they please come inside? The fourth me message encouraged us to invite people into our lives, homes and church, and more importantly, in relationship with Christ year-round, including the holidays. The fourth message, adjusting our perspective, exhorts us to rejoice in everything and let go of our anxiety, particularly during the holidays. Now please, when you leave here today, Go to ingamarchurch.org and read the transcripts or watch the videos of these sermons to continue refocusing on Christ as we speed towards Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. When you go to the website, look to the right and click online sermons on the website. So today's message is surprise. Say it with me. Surprise! Surprise! It is the last in the series of Are You Ready for Christmas? Surprise! I want the congregation to join in with me on the... Twelve drummers drumming! Yeah. Eleven... <laughs> Please, that's our surprise. Play it for us. <laughs> Twelve drummers drumming. Yeah. Eleven pipers piping. Ten, Ten and more than leaving. Nine ladies dancing. Eight maids a milking. Seven swans a swimming. Six geese a laying. Five golden rings. Ba -da -bum -bum. Four calling birds. Three French hens. Two turtle doves. And a partridge in a pear tree. Well, that's our surprise, one of our surprises for, day, for, for today and a gift for Christmas. Now, the surprise was everybody in the congregation thought that they were going to be singing the 12 Days of Christmas with me. But the surprise beyond the surprise was the staff singing for all of us. As we continue together today, think about the surprise beyond the surprise, looking to Christmas Eve, which is tomorrow. We want to move from the obvious, what we can clearly see, to the less obvious, striving to open our eyes spiritually. That's intentional faith development. Say that with me, intentional faith development. Intentional faith development. Now, the words of Howard Thurman, a theologian, speaks to my heart. That's not a surprise. Maybe you will feel the same way when I share some of his words with you. Thurman's version of the surprise goes beyond the surprise. In the glad surprise, in Meditations of the Heart, one of his many books, he says, the glad surprise carries the elements of elation, of life, of something over and beyond the surprise itself. It is a new thing, a glad surprise, the stirring of life at the end of winter. One day there seems to be no sign of life, and then almost overnight, swelling buds, delicate blooms, blades of grass, bugs, insects, an entire world of newness everywhere. Can I get an hallelujah? Hallelujah! Now the surprise, and the surprise beyond the surprise, 
will have some variations, some of them very positive, like as is true with Thurman, some of them a little bit negative. They come in different shapes and sizes. The surprise, it can be unwelcome, it can be welcome. Could be a lump of coal in a stocking that Santa left behind for those people who were naughty. Or it could be Christmas gifts wrapped and left under the tree. God shows us that there is something to be learned, bad or good, that there's more than coal or gifts. The surprise beyond the surprise. You know, there's the birthday party where everyone jumps out and says, what do they say? Surprise! The beyond the surprise for a spouse or friend who planned the party is that the birthday guy or gal after the party hates the surprise. The party planners learned never to throw a party and surprise them again, beyond the surprise. Then there's my story. On Christmas Eve, my brother surprised me by bringing a video to my parents. He had to coax me into watching it. The film was Schindler's List. Anybody familiar with it? Okay, Christmas Eve, keep that in mind. This is a Steven Spielberg film where Jews suffered terribly in Nazi concentration camps. Surprise, that Christmas Eve was not a merry Christmas Eve for me. I learned not to watch sad movies on Christmas Eve beyond the surprise. Now, do you remember the show Extreme Makeover, Home Edition? Anybody watch it? I watch it all the time and I am not ashamed. <laughs> well, two surprises. I often watch with real fascination when the show comes on, and I watch the two-parter on Monday. You know, there's Ty Pennington. Anybody know Ty Pennington? He's the lanky ex-model who's at the center of the show. And the basic template for the show is a struggling family living in a home, in a, in a crumbling home, with, say, blooming mold, and they're also struggling with an issue, say, an ill family member. So the human drama of the show always draws me in. Enter Ty and a legion of shiny, happy designers who generate enough enthusiasm to light up a small city. The family is sent off on a luxurious vacation while Ty and company do their magic in one week. They build a home in one week. Oh, the drama when the family returns. The new house is blocked by this huge bus that pulls off to reveal a colossal McMansion for the family. Surprise. The new owners end up with stuff they don't need to live a basic life. Surprise. For example, the Gilbert family from many episodes ago got a carousel in their backyard. Who needs a personal carousel? I don't. Though I watched with fascination, I said to myself during every single episode, how are impoverished people like the Gilberts going to pay huge energy bills and pay higher taxes on this huge house? I guess maybe I should just go with the show, but I can't. And then I'm thinking, how will they repair that carousel when it breaks down? Who's going to pay for that? And many of the families couldn't, and many of the families can't. And that's what happened to the Gilberts. They couldn't manage the higher energy bills, and they lost their home. Surprise. A sad one. I'm wondering if the families had thought, if they had thought through the long-term issues, the surprise beyond the surprise, would they have gone on Extreme Makeover in the first place? We need to look deeper. We need to dig deeper. Now, on a more positive note, I've had a surprise or two of my own. Now, the very first time that I traveled to Europe, I went to Greece. And I, I'll go back to my brother. We traveled together, and we had plans. We we're going to be there for 10 days. Now, one of those plans was to stay in Mykonos, which is, off the island, or is an island off of Greece. We were going to be there for five days. Well, when we arrived by ship, we got off, and a motorbike, which I, I, from memory, had planks attached to it, we were taken up a hill, and we clung to those planks up the hill. Well, thankfully, we arrived at the hotel in one piece to an amazing staff. And the response to all of our requests were, but of course. I love that. It was like, but of course. But then, you know, the magic ended even just for a moment when a woman called us foreigners. Foreigners!
foreigners, surprise, living in the United States all my life, other people were foreigners who came to our shores for opportunities. Well, I tell you, that was the beginning of my re-education, a broader worldview, the surprise beyond the surprise. When I was in the hotel, I started watching international news, learning other people's perspectives. Later, when I worked as an intern at CARE, a non-government organization, an international nonprofit, I started looking at things differently because their goal was to eliminate global poverty, focusing on women and girls to help families and communities to change the world. I purposely grew out of that moment when a hotel employee called me a foreigner. I really changed. I feel as if I, I, feel as if I transformed beyond the surprise. Now, Scripture is full of surprises. In Old Testament, Micah 5, verses 2 to 5, the people of Israel, the Hebrews, were looking for a grown man to make their li miserable lives right. The Hebrews had long been subjugated, brutalized by the Egyptians, the Assyrians, and many other cultures. Israel was abandoned. The prophet Micah describes a shepherd king, a leader, and a warrior who, who would save Israel from oppression and control Israel's distant future. Surprise! They left out the baby Jesus that was part of the prophecy. That sermon surprise beyond the surprise. Mary, she was a huge part of Israel's future, of this prophecy. Mary, the woman, would be the mother of the baby Jesus. As an adult, Jesus would be a shepherd. Jesus would be the king of kings. Jesus would be a warrior in pursuit of justice. The people of Israel just couldn't fathom their savior as a child from a young mother named Mary. Surprise. Now, I see two surprises in today's scripture in Galatians, focusing on Mary. The first one, like the homemaker, like being a foreigner. And then the, first, the second one involves Elizabeth, Elizabeth who got some good news. Immediately, Elizabeth learns that Mary is pregnant. Jesus jumps in Mary's belly. Elizabeth is pregnant, and that child jumps too. And Elizabeth says, Mary is giving birth to Israel's Savior, really the Savior of all people. Say it with me. What's that word? Surprise. There's more. The surprise beyond the surprise. The glad surprise. And that is the familial relationship between Mary and Elizabeth, which deepens when Mary, a virgin, gives birth or is going to give birth to a child and a woman seeing things supernaturally. Mary at 15 could have been ostracized by a very traditional culture where girls and women were not to be pregnant outside of marriage. Elizabeth could have also faced outrage for taking Mary in for three months. These women grew with one another in their pregnancies. They clung to one another. That was truly a relationship with a powerful bond. They learned of something deeper, their relationship knowing a fuller maturity in difficult times. Surprise, the deepening relationship beyond the surprise of Jesus' supernatural conception. Mary and Elizabeth's relationship is a model for how deep we should go with one another in our relationships. We get so busy during the holidays that whipping up surprises like wrapped gifts and baked cookies can eclipse what's important. Are we living out a Mary-Elizabeth relationship with those we know, with those around us? Do we try to be relationally intimate with strangers to show them Jesus shining from within each of us. One surprise beyond the surprise must be spending time with people who don't know God, who are seeking God, 
who do not attend church. Matthew 28, 9 to 20 says, actually commands us, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. That's risk-taking mission and service. Say it with me. Risk-taking mission and service. Surprise. Now please take a moment to look at the invitation on the screen as we continue thinking about connecting. Consider this virtual invitation, similar to an evite or a constant contact email. You are cordially invited Christmas Eve at Ingramar Church, 4, 7, 9, and 11 p.m. We'd love to see you there. Each of you, please take this invitation, transform it, share it by email, text, Twitter, phone, Facebook, and in person. Pull out your phones now and text someone adding or adding the reminder to your calendar so that you can remember to contact people after church. Ask your neighbor or someone standing at the checkout line, at the checkout counter at the supermarket. I'm notorious for that. Ask someone to come to church on Christmas Eve, on a Sunday in 2013, to a small group to celebrate Jesus' birth and life. You know, many struggle with their faith and belonging to anything in these troubling times when small children are taken away from us, when people are taken away from us. We belong. We are part of a beloved community of Christ here at Ingemar Church. Surprise others by inviting them into your lives, inviting them into our lives, church, and most importantly, in relationship with Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus did just that with so many during his ministry, and he changed the world.